The large majority of people know only one type of trading, and that is to buy long term and hold. This is of course what their brokers recommend, so that is what they do. This type of trading is easiest for the broker, because it requires very little work after the initial purchase. But is it best for you? Let's take a look at some stock charts that show what can happen if you follow the oft-repeated mantra of the stockbrokers. If you were to ask the majority of traders what type of trading is the riskiest, most would say short-term trading. Why is that? If you thought buying stocks long-term and holding them, as brokers advise, was the safest method of buying stocks, take a look at the following charts. Here we see one of the truly big names of the stock world, Microsoft. Following your broker's advice of buy and hold, you could have bought this stock at $110 a share and held it for a year so that you could tell your friends then that it was now worth $60 a share for almost a 50% loss. Here we have another great stock, or so we thought when our broker talked us into buying it at the time that it was a darling of Wall Street. Going from $70 to $12 a share probably bruised our egos on this buy. Keep in mind that for this stock to go back up to 70, it will have to increase its value almost 600%. What are the odds of that happening in the next 5 to 10 years? Probably not very good. Here we have one of my favorite stocks, Cisco Systems, a great company. This stock points out one of my important rules. The rule is, it don't gotta. What this rule means is that once a stock takes a severe beating and takes a huge drop in price, it don't got to go back up. You will hear brokers over and over again telling us that when a blue chip stock hits a 52 week low that it must go back up and that now is a great time to buy. When you hear that, think of this stock and my rule of it don't got it. You see, this stock was trading between $20 and $30 a share back in the beginning of 2001. And seven years later, in 2008, it is still trading in that same range. The stock for this great company never did go back up. Here is another stock that would have taken you on a real roller coaster ride. You could have bought this stock at $20, watched it soar to 90, and then cried as it finished the year right back where it started at 20. That ride had to be gut wrenching. Here's another great stock that you could have purchased at $135 only to watch it careen out of control all the way down to $20, a loss of 84%. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. This stock dropped from $50 to $15 in just one year and will have to go up over 300% to get back where it started. Quite a daunting task. And finally we have saved the best for last. This company was really the darling of Wall Street as it climbed all the way to $270 a share. Everyone wanted a piece of this stock. A year later, it was selling at 11% of its peak price. What a shame. This stock will have to go up 900% to get back to its former glory. What are the odds of that happening anytime soon? Notice that some of these stocks are the big name ones that brokers, in the past at least, have said were important to have in your portfolio. Are you starting to see my point? If you had owned $10,000 worth of each of these stocks long in March 2000, your portfolio would have been worth $70,000. One year later, in February 2001, your portfolio would have been worth a little over $25,000, a loss of 63%. During that one year, 58% of all stocks lost money many more than 50% losses. What are the odds that you would have picked a winner that year if all you knew how to do was trade long positions where you buy low and sell high? If you had been wise enough to sell these stocks short as the market dropped and had held that position for one full year, your account would have been worth $122,000, an increase of 75%. Simply by knowing how to trade a different way you could have turned a 63% loss into a 75% gain. But there's more. If, however, using those same stocks you had done short-term trading, buying when the daily stochastic hit 20 and selling when it peaked, and you had been selling short whenever the daily stochastic hit 80, your account would have grown from $70,000 to $120,000. 
to over $2.5 million, an increase of over 3,500%. Now, this is not rocket science here, but you must agree that it's not real likely that you would have earned 3,500% growth in one year. But would you settle for, say, one-tenth of that at 350%? You get the point, don't you? Most traders do not know how to trade short-term and have no clue what selling short means, and therefore should not attempt to do this type of trading. But, as you have seen here, those who have this knowledge have a great advantage over those who don't. This type of short-term trading does, however, require much more time and effort. What do you think? Is it worth it? Why is it, then, that so many people insist on trading long-term and buying only long positions? It's because they are dependent on brokers and don't know how to trade for themselves. The large majority of people have fallen into the trap carefully laid for them by brokerage houses. Rule number one, always use a broker to trade. Rule two, buy long and hold. Rule three, always trust your broker and any analyst who appears in print. These are the rules the investing industry wants us to live by. Are you game? As we've seen, following these rules is not the best way to secure your financial future. Let's take a deeper look at how these rules work by reading an article found by one of my students in The Motley Fool. This article is from The Motley Fool and explains why news, especially that promoted by brokerages, is basically pretty much worthless. Its only value is knowing that millions of amateurs will be reading it and believing it. This is an outstanding article that will help you to better understand how the game is really played. Here at The Fool, and especially for rulemaker investors, we preach doing your own company research. Why do we do this when so many well-educated, well-paid analysts are out there doing it already? Why not just read what the experts have to say? Why? Because their analysis can't be trusted. Sorry, but the truth hurts. Can Analysts Be Trusted? Several disturbing stories in the media have resonated with me lately, and when Mary Meeker showed up on the cover of Fortune with the caption, Can We Ever Trust Wall Street Again? That did it. Once labeled the Queen of the Net, Mary Meeker rose to prominence as an Internet analyst for Morgan Stanley, made millions for her firm and herself, reportedly $15 million in 1999 and now is clinging to the buy recommendations of dozens of struggling internet companies that she helped take public. No matter, she's rich and her firm is richer thanks to her deals. She was just doing her job, she says. Maybe so, but what exactly is her job? The title of analyst implies Mary Meeker is analyzing companies. Okay, maybe. The problem is that today's sell-side analysts are part analyst, part cheerleader, and part dealmaker. Meeker clearly got carried away with the cheerleader and dealmaker parts and has lost credibility as an analyst. It's not uncommon. My personal experience with sell-side analysts is, how shall I put this, tainted? In my previous life as a corporate financial analyst who worked with sell-side analysts, I discovered that analysts rely way too much on corporate guidance and not enough on true research. The further immersed in the financial markets I get, the more this truth turns up. It's not like this is a secret. The guys on CNBC's Squawk Box are constantly satirizing about the insightfulness, or lack thereof, of Wall Street's wise. And Fortune must run a story every month that tells tales of shoddy analysis or biased analyst reports. Some would argue that having research and investment banking in the same firm is necessary because the hefty iBanking fees support the analyst's salaries. Without other revenue, the thinking goes, iBanks could not support their research departments. Hogwash. The truth is that those research departments have become extensions of client PR departments. Too many analysts are just cheerleaders. So, if you can't trust the analyst to provide objective company analysis, who can you trust? To answer that, we must first define analyst. There are two kinds of analysts, buy-side and sell-side. Buy-side analysts typically work for money management firms like hedge funds, mutual fund companies, 
or boutique investment advisors. They research stocks and all sorts of other investment opportunities with one goal in mind, make money off their research. When they make the right call, the firm and its clients to whom it sells its research and advice prosper. That's the goal, make money. These firms and their analysts are paid well for their objective analysis. Sales side analysts, also known as Wall Street analysts, work for investment banks with brokerage divisions. They usually have a field of expertise such as airlines or software companies and evaluate companies within their respective fields. They supposedly understand the inner workings of these companies and supposedly have elaborate financial models from which earnings estimates and valuation arguments and buy, sell, and hold recommendations are based on. The big difference between buy-side and sell-side analysts is motivation. Buy-siders are single-minded in purpose, make money based on research. They are motivated to be objective. Sell-siders, on the other hand, are torn between honestly evaluating companies and bringing in new investment banking business. In order to bring in the business, you have to pucker up to the companies needing iBanking work. Write a report about the promising opportunities of a company, and that company is more likely to choose your firm when it comes time to issue debt or make a secondary offering. Underwriting, when iBanks raise capital for corporations, fees are astronomical, and initial public offering can cost as much as 7% of the capital raised, billions of dollars and they easily trump revenues from research products. Therein lies the problem. Brokers confuse the situation even more for sell-siders. Brokers want the hot stocks with large trading volume to have strong recommendations from the analysts. It helps them sell stocks, which generates commissions. If analysts are down on a company, the brokers can't push that stock to retail and institutional investors, and commissions suffer. Independent research firms do exist. Sure, their analysts don't make the coin that sell-side analysts do, but at least they can maintain integrity. The Chinese wall that supposedly exists between banking relationships and sell-side research analysts is as solid as rice paper. Just last month, J.P. Morgan got caught with its pants down when an internal memo mandating that analysts get feedback from its investment bankers and corporate clients prior to changing stock recommendations got out. There is no mistaking that message. If your analysis could damage our iBanking relationships, bury it. Fortune also profiled the uglier side of this quid pro quo game in an article about Credit Suisse first Boston banking analyst Mike Mayo. In a nutshell, Mayo lost his job with the firm because he downgraded the entire banking industry thereby threatening CFSB's iBanking relationships. Based on these articles, I'm sure you can see why it is usually best to do the exact opposite of what the brokers tell you. Now let's take a look at how you go about doing just that. In other words, selling short and trading in the short term. Buying only long positions when the market and your stocks are going down is like trying to swim upstream. Eventually, you end up floating downstream, tired and worn out. So, how does short selling work? Brokerages hold vast amounts of some stocks as makers on a stock, or they have large institutional clients who hold large number of shares of these stocks. The only way they make money from these shares is by commissions when they are traded. If the markets are down, there is less trading and fewer commissions. So the brokerages simply made up some new rules so that they could make more money. Brokerages will allow you to borrow these shares with the promise that you will return them. So you sell these borrowed shares to a third party at whatever price they are willing to pay. After the price of the stock has dropped, you buy the stock back from a fourth party and return the shares to the brokerage. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But it really does work. You are then allowed to profit from the difference between the selling price and the buying price. For example, if you had borrowed and then sold 100 shares of stock XYZ at $50 a share and then purchased it back later, which is called buying to cover, at $30 a share, the difference between 50 and 30 is 20 
your profit would have been $20 times 100 shares or $2,000. What type of markets are good for shorting? Are some times better than other times? Let's take a look and see. Here we have a visual representation of those two old emotions that drive the marketplace, greed and fear. As the NASDAQ took a 2,000 point drop in April and May of 2000, from 5,000, a record, down to 3,000, a record drop. Those who noticed the long-term trend made a great deal of money selling stocks short. Because the vast majority of investors had been used to the long bull market, they kept thinking that the drops were only temporary. They were willing to keep right on buying long positions while the smart money was selling short. If you take a look at the chart, you will notice that it took a lot longer for the NASDAQ to go from 3,000 up to 5,000 than it did to go back down to 3,000. It took approximately five months to climb up that hill, but only two months to roll down it. This is one reason why selling short, if done correctly, can be so lucrative. Keeping an eye on the major market trends is another way to build safety into your trading. The NASDAQ eventually dropped all the way down to 1200 in August of 2002, and those who kept selling short were smiling all the way to the bank as the pundits kept saying all the way along that the market had bottomed out. It took five months to go from 3000 up to 5000 That's greed. It took only two months to go back down to 3000 That's fear. So which emotion do you think is more powerful? As it turns out, people are more predictable when they are afraid than when they are greedy. You can use this knowledge to increase your bankroll. What types of stocks are good for selling short? Distressed companies, companies with poor earnings reports, companies that have been dropping in price for an extended period of time. Let's take a look at each of these. What is a distressed company? Companies that have had to lay off employees, Companies that have had a lawsuit filed against them. Companies that are not competing well in the marketplace, that is, poor earnings. And companies that have had their price target lowered. These are key things to look for when you want a company's stock price to drop so that you can profit from it. How do you go about finding these distressed companies? The easiest way to find these companies is to search the news. One way to do this is to use the keyword search function on TradeStation, Reuters or Bloomberg or any other news service. You can go to almost any of these news services on the internet and they will have a keyword search. Now think of any words that you would deem negative about a company. Words like layoff, target price, lawsuit, earnings, etc. These are all good words to look for. Poor earnings reports are another way to find stocks that are likely to be headed down. You can do a keyword search on TradeStation or you can keep an eye on whispernumber.com or any of the major news services. Here you can see the effects of a poor earnings report where investors obviously wanted something more. This type of drop is not uncommon and I'm sure there are those traders who make a good living off of trading the news like this. It is risky but as you can see can be very rewarding. This company's stock price dropped 32 percent and their $50 put option price increased 483% in just one day. A great way to find stocks that are very likely to be headed down is to find those stocks where the price has been dropping for six months or more. These dog stocks, as I call them, are not very likely to be heading up for long periods of time. They will usually only go up for three to six days and then head right back down again. These dog stocks are stocks where the public has lost confidence and it will take a great deal of good news for them to regain that confidence. Another good thing about these stocks is that because they have been dropping for such a long time, their prices are very often quite low, meaning you can buy in volume. Another criteria to use for these stocks is good volume and market capitalization. You want to make sure that when you go to sell the stock initially, and later to buy the stock back, which is called buying to cover, after selling it short, that there will be plenty of people willing to buy and then sell. You also want stocks that, due to large volume and interest, will keep popping back up after a dip so that you can sell it short again. 
When you factor in these criteria, you will often find that these dog stocks are big name companies, meaning that traders will keep on buying and selling them even when the price continues to drop. This might have something to do with stockbrokers. What do you think? Here is one set of criteria that you can use to find some dog stocks. Let us go now, step by step, as we sell a stock short. Step 1. Go to Zacks.com or any other good stock screener that has the percent price change and search using the following criterion. A. Price is greater than 10 and less than 50. Next, volume is greater than 1 million. Market cap greater than 1 billion and the 12 week percent price change less than zero. Finally, the 4 week percent price change less than 20. Here is the screen from Zacks.com using this criterion. After we run this search, we get the following results. Notice that we have 152 stocks that match this screening criteria. If we want, we could decrease this list by increasing either our volume or market cap criteria. Next, we sort our results by the percent price change four weeks column and end up with the stock CAH at the top of our results with a 13.4% increase in price during the past four weeks. At the other end of the spectrum, we have the stock IRE, which lost 35.9% during the past four weeks. Now, based on this information, where do you think the daily stochastic will be for the stock CAH and the others at the top of this sort? That's right. Most likely the daily stochastic will be up around 80, while those stocks at the bottom of the list, those with the largest losses for the month, will more likely have their stochastic near 20. Whenever you use your stock screener, always sort your results by either the 4 week percent price change or the one week percent price change so that you can then go to one end of the column or the other to find stocks that have their daily stochastic either near 80 or 20. If you want to sell stocks short, you will begin by looking at the stocks with the largest increase and if you want to buy stocks long, you would look at those that have dropped the most so that you can buy them cheaply. Here you can see that the stock CAH does in fact have its daily stochastic above 80 and it is at 92. We can also see that the stock from the bottom of the list, IRE, has its daily stochastic right at 20. Step 2. Sort your list by the percentage increase over the last four weeks as we have just mentioned. Step 3. Begin watching these stocks and whenever the daily stochastic reaches 80 or if it peaks and turns down, sell the stock short. There may be up to 100 stocks on this list. Be patient and you will be rewarded. This is how the professionals make money by doing their homework. It may take a little longer, but the results will be well worth the trouble. It is very important that you get used to using the stock screener as it will dramatically improve your trading by allowing you to begin with just the right type of stock for the market conditions. Practice with it until it becomes second nature to you. If you were able to watch these stocks during the day, apply the following guidelines and they will help protect you. Wait until the 60 minute MACD begins to peak above the center line, then watch the 15 minute MACD. As soon as it ticks down, check the 15 minute stochastic. If it is headed down, you are OK. If it is headed up, wait until it turns down. This will help you to sell at the peak price of the day. Practice this skill on paper until you are an expert. Once the 15 minute stochastic is headed down, then watch the 5 minute stochastic. If it is low, wait until it goes up one more time, peaks and turns down. If it is high, then sell short just as it turns down along with the 5 minute MACD. If you are working during the day and must place your orders in the evening, do the following. As the daily stochastic turns down from its peak around 80, check the 60 minute MACD. If it is above the center line, you may short. Try to estimate the high price for tomorrow and place the order accordingly. This may take some practice 
because these types of stocks drop rapidly once they peak. Step 4. Once you have a confirmed sell, you must quickly place your stop loss order about one to one and a half points or dollars above the high price of the day. With stocks above $20, I would use one and a half points. With those below $20, I would use one dollar. As the stock price drops, replace your stop loss orders at the end of each day with a new order one to one and a half points above the high price of the day. If the high price of one day is higher than the day before, do not change your stop loss on that day. After a couple of days, if the stock has been doing as you anticipated, you might tighten your stops. For stocks over $20, drop the stop to just $1 above the high price of the day, and then after a few more days, drop it to 50 cents. Do the same with stocks under $20. After a couple of days, drop the stop to 75 cents above the high price of the day, and then to 50 cents a few days later. Continue dropping the stop limit orders each day until you finally get stopped out or until the daily stochastic hits 20. Once it hits 20, quickly buy back to cover your short before the price goes up again. Why? The reason is that with the high volume, high name recognition stocks, once they hit 20, they often bounce back up as investors are talked into buying them because they are now a good deal. Look at the history of the stock you are shorting to determine which course you will take as an exit strategy, which of course you should figure out before you make your trade. Step 5. Once you have bought back your stock to cover your short position, simply go to your list of stocks and look for another one that is ready to short and start all over again. Keep shorting until the weekly MACD for the market you are trading in ticks up or levels off with the weekly stochastic near 20 or turning up. Here is another way to short stocks for those who are aggressive or day traders. Generally, when a stock has a huge jump in price one day, the stock price will dip for the next few days as the pros take their profits and run. So when you see one of these patterns at the end of the first day or early the next morning, short the stock. You can see that this play doesn't usually last for more than a day or two, so you have to buy back the stock to cover fairly quickly. Try not to do it in the same day so that you can avoid the pattern day trader criteria. This is a risky play, so be sure that you have tight protective stops in place. Very often a play like this will go bust if the news that caused the jump in the first place was actually truly good news instead of the usual fluff that we get so often. Be sure you place a protective stop as soon as you sell short. Watch the hourly MACD and make sure it has turned down before you sell. This is very important. The stochastic will often bounce up and down, but once the MACD has dropped, you are assured of a change in trend and are much safer. After the hourly MACD has turned down one tick, wait for the 5-minute stochastic to peak again then sell short just as it hits 80 or as it begins to drop. Watch the one minute stochastic and wait until it peaks. Very often the drop after one of these big gainer days will last one to five days before the stock begins going back up again. Be sure to buy back to cover your short position before that happens. Here in figure 16.6 we have an example of a stock that jumped up big and then dropped back quickly just as we had hoped. This stock closed at $103 on one day and jumped up 9% the next day and closed around $112. Three days later, it had dropped back down to $100, a loss, if you were holding long of over 10%, or a gain of 10% if you are shorting. It is better to take whatever profit you can get the first day rather than take a chance. To practice this type of play, go to BigCharts.com and each day check out the stocks on the Big Report's largest percentage gain in price. Watch their daily charts for a few days after their big gainer day and see what happens to the price. Notice how many days it takes for the price to drop and how far down the price goes before it heads back up. Also take note of the volume for these stocks. Check the detailed quotes on Big Charts for each stock and see what the average volume is. By taking the extra time to learn the characteristics of these types of stocks, 
you will add much safety to your trading as you begin selling stocks short. A safer shorting play is to find a stock that has been dropping for some time and therefore has a lot of negativity to overcome before it makes an extended upwards drive. These are our dog stocks. In this chart we have such a stock. In this daily chart, Intel dropped from $27 a share down to around $18, a 33% decline. Next, we have a short-lived bounce, which is quite normal and actually what we want. The bounce only lasted 9 days, and the stochastic didn't even reach 80 before dropping, which is a sign of weakness and continued negativity. This was followed by a short drop, and then the second upwards bounce. Because of the continued negative sentiment, it is most likely that this second bounce will be followed by up to a week of dropping prices, a great shorting opportunity. To improve your trading, try to become as familiar as possible with the characteristics of the different types of trades. This will up the odds in your favor as you have a good idea of what to expect. Stocks ready to short where the high daily stochastic has just turned down tend to follow a predictable pattern each day. First, they go up early, drop after 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, peak a second time between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m., and then make their final drop. This little bit of information now makes it possible for me to sleep in if I desire and still make good trades on shorting. This is a general pattern and does not always occur, but the large majority of time it does. Once the 60-minute MACD has ticked down, the shorter time frame MACDs will each bottom out and then bubble up again before the 60 minute MACD bottoms out. As these short term MACDs bubble up, the price of the stock will rise. Then, one at a time, the bubbles will burst and the MACDs will again turn down and the price will begin dropping again. I tell you this so that you will know what to expect and so that you will not be afraid after you have shorted as the price keeps popping back up. If you buy early in the day, this will be more of a problem if you sell short early than if you trade later in the day. The best time to sell a stock short is after 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you short a stock before 2 p.m., it will usually drop for a short time and then go right back up and it may go up even higher than the price you sold it for, although if you have followed all the rules, this shouldn't be much of a problem. If the daily stochastic is headed up, watch the 30 minute MACD and wait until it ticks down, usually after 2 p.m. Eastern Standard. Next, if the daily stochastic has already peaked above 80 and is headed down, watch the 15 minute MACD and wait until it ticks down, again, usually after 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. After either the 30 minute MACD or 15 minute MACD, whichever you are using, ticks down, go to the 1 minute stochastic, and when it gets near 80, quickly sell your stock short. But in all cases, the hourly MACD must be above the center line. Remember, you cannot sell a stock short when the tick indicator is headed down. In other words, the last bid tick must be higher than the one just before it. If you look at your brokerage trading screen, they should have some type of arrow indicator to show this to you. As soon as you have a confirmed sell, place your stop loss order. Remember, a stop loss order is not active during extended hours trading. If the stock gaps up overnight, you may be left unprotected unless you use a stop loss market order. Remember, under $20, $1 above the high point of the day, and if your stock is over $20, use $1.50 instead. If the stock does as you anticipate it, you may tighten these stops after a few days. If you are a day trader, as soon as you sell short, begin watching the 5 minute stochastic. As it dips below 35, begin watching the 1 minute stochastic. When the 1 minute stochastic either turns up or dips below 20 and then crosses back up above 20, buy to cover your short position. This may be the next day. If you are a little more conservative, pick a percent or dollar figure that you would be happy to make on this trade. Once your stock has dropped far enough to make the amount of money you want, simply exit the trade and buy the stock back to cover your short position. 
This should be from 2 to 5 percent. As long as the 5 minute MACD is headed down, this will work. However, once it levels off, you should exit the trade no matter how much money you have made as a day trader. If the overall stock market is very weak and dropping, you may want to try this. Hold the stock overnight and sell it the next day as the 5 minute MACD crosses up. Now let's practice shorting some dog stocks. First, we'll go to MSN Stock Screener to find some shorting candidates, and then we'll go to Trade Station to practice getting in and out at the right time. Here you can see one set of criterion you can use, and there will be another at the end of this lesson. This is a stock that we found using the criteria from the last slide. One question traders ask is, when do I know for sure that I have a dog stock? Good question. The answer is you may not know for sure for several weeks after the stock peaks and starts heading down. For this stock, the first drop lasted almost two weeks, followed by a sideways move. Then we see the daily stochastic jump up sharply with no big price increase. This is a sign of weakness. After the first day's jump, the stock again goes sideways, and it is now time to pounce. At this point, as the market as a whole is dipping, and the weekly MACD is ticking down, which is important before we begin shorting, we decide to short this stock. We always want stocks to jump as close to 80 on the daily stochastic as possible before shorting them. This will allow us a greater profit and more safety. Here we have zoomed in on the previous chart to look at how to sell this stock short. You can see the daily stochastic has jumped above 80, and that is what we want. One of the characteristics of dog stocks is that the daily stochastic does not stay above 80 for more than one or two days before making a sharp reversal. So the trick is to get in just as it hits above 80. In this case, we make the decision to short tomorrow as the stochastic just touches 80. The closing price for the day is 27.24. Knowing that the price is likely to fall at any time, we decide to sell the stock short at 27.25 near the close. We could gamble a little and ask a higher price if the intraday indicators look like they might be headed up early in the day, but for this example, we won't. Notice the volume on this stock, over 13 million. These high volume stocks are great for shorting because with this many people trading, there will almost always be a group that think the price has bottomed out and are willing to drive the price up again so that we can short it. On this day, as the stochastic peaks above 80, we look to see if our stock price went above our selling price of 27.50. We can see that it did as it peaked at 27.81, so our order is filled. The next thing we need to do by the end of the day is to place our buy stop loss order. This can be a limit or market order, but in this case I'd like to use market orders. So we place a stop loss buy order at 29.30, which is about $1.50 above the high price of the day. So tomorrow if the stock price goes up to 29.30, we will buy our stock back at that price and close out our position. We now have an open short position. On this day, the price drops just as we had hoped. The high price for the day is 27.23, and so we remove our stop loss order from yesterday and replace it with one for 28.25, which is about $1 above the high price of the day. We do this because of the big one day drop. This drop gives us confidence that there will likely not be any big jumps in price. If the drop had not been so significant, we would have waited another day with the stop at $1.50 above the high price. The stock price continues to fall and the stochastic continues down as we had hoped. The high price of the day is 25 and of course this makes us happy as we sold the stock short at 27.25 and after only two days we have netted a profit of 8% and growing. Because the stock price is dropping so well, we decide to tighten the stop further to just 50 cents. We now place the stop at 25.50.
The high today was just over $24 at 2411. We now enter the danger zone. The stochastic has just dropped below 20 and depending on overall market conditions, the price of this stock could take a bounce upwards. This is why you need to get to know your stock. Look at the past under similar conditions to get any idea how long this stock stays down. If the stock is volatile at this time, we would probably place a buy order near the close of the day to close out our position. Such is not the case with this stock and our exit strategy is to wait until the stochastic breaks up around 20. So we place our stop 50 cents above the high price of the day at 24.60. Now let's see what tomorrow brings. It appears that our strategy of staying in has paid off with another big drop in price. The stochastic stays down and the MACD is still ticking down. The high price of the day is only 24, so we drop our stop order down to 24.50. At this point, things are looking good. If the price jumps up tomorrow, we will get stopped out at 24.50 for a 10% profit. The stock price goes sideways today and the stochastic also stays near the same. The high price is only 22.40 and so our plan continues to work well. We reset our stop at 22.90 and get ready for tomorrow. At this point we know that our run is most likely nearing an end and rather than waiting to get stopped out we could begin to think about removing our stop and just placing a buy order. However, the MACD is still ticking down so we decide to wait a few more days and see how we do. The price of our stock continues to tumble. The stochastic continues level and the MACD continues to tick down. Our high price today is 2146 so we reset our stop at 22 even. Our patience continues to be rewarded as the price falls further. The stochastic still has not turned up and the MACD continues ticking down. The high price is 1995 and we reset our stop at 2050. We are now anticipating the end of our run within a very few days. Today we have a little excitement as the high price bounces up. The stochastic is still flat however and the MACD has not leveled out. This is the first bounce and will likely not be sustained. The high price jumps up a little to 2036 so we decide not to change our stop loss at this time. We leave it at 2050 which is very close to the high of the day. If the price jumps up tomorrow we will likely get stopped out and close our position. Today brings even more excitement because the high price comes within 4 cents of our stop price, but we are still in the game. If we had been home during the day, we might have decided to close out our position due to the huge drop. Remember, take the money and run. With a drop this big, that would have been a very good idea. The stochastic has taken a small rise and we can now see that our days are numbered. The price goes sideways on this day and the stochastic is now right at 20. One way to exit this trade at this point would be to place a buy order tomorrow at or near the low price of the day which is $19.15 or we can stay in and wait to get stopped out. This is a toss up with this stock. If the market is turning up, we should get out. If it is still headed down, we may want to stay in. We decide to stay in but to tighten our stop a little more and put it at $20.25. On this day, the low of the day hit 1907. So if we had placed a buy order at $19.15, it would have been filled and we would have netted almost 30% profit. The stochastic is level near 20 and the MACD has just leveled off. This is for sure our final chance to try and close our position without getting stopped out. If we decide to go this route, we will try to buy back near the low of the day at $19. Our high is about the same as yesterday, but we decide to tighten our stop even more and set it at $20. On this day, our low drops a little more, but so does our high price. We could have closed out our position at 19 or wait to get stopped out. Let's see which strategy works best, buying back at 19 or getting stopped out at 20. I'll let you make that choice. 
If we had gambled and stayed in the stock, the high just jumped a little and hit 1975, which is dangerously close to 20. The MACD has ticked up and, of course, that is a sure sign of things to come. Let's go now and see what tomorrow brings. As you can see, the price finally jumped up. And if we had stayed in, we would have gotten stopped out at our $20. The stochastic has risen and the MACD continues to tick up. So we see that getting out a few days earlier would, of course, have been the most profitable course of action. Let's go now and look at another set of criteria for finding dog stocks. You can take these criteria to find some more dog stocks. Notice we have raised the volume standard to 1 million and have added the additional criteria of the P-E ratio. Good luck! What should you do if you want to keep fully invested in the market, this is greed, and the market has turned up, in other words the weekly MACD is ticking up, but the daily stochastic has peaked and is dropping. You know the odds are that the market and most stocks will be dropping from 3 to 5 days before going back up, as there will be some profit taking. All you want is your money to continue working for you. You want to short for a few days, but can't seem to find any good stocks to short because everything in the world is going up. What you really want are stocks that are weak, these are good for shorting, but that have bounced up during the past week or so, and are most likely to take a fall in the next few days. Well, here's your answer. Enter the following criterion into your stock screener. Then sort by the six month percentage price change from lowest to highest, in other words ascending order. Then find the stocks with the daily stochastic at the highest point and with the hourly MACD above the line or just crossing the line downward. These will be the best stocks that are just ready to short. Use the hourly MACD and stochastic to help you place your bid. If the stochastic is high, try bidding near the close of the day. If it has already started to drop, bid a little lower. This is a good skill to help you practice your bidding. Here are the criteria you can use as you go to your MSN stock screener. First, let the market cap be greater than 500 million. Next, quarterly volume greater than 500,000. Six month percentage price change less than zero. This will give you a weak stock and the higher they bounce in a week, the more likely they are to fall right back down. Next, the percentage price change last week set to high as possible. This will give you stocks with a high daily stochastic ready to short. Next, P-E ratio also high as possible. The higher they are, the harder they fall. And finally, set the current price to greater than 10 and less than 50. Try paper trading for a little while until you get used to shorting as the market rises. This can be tricky and is somewhat risky, so be careful. Remember, to short a bull market you must find weak stocks. The weaker, the better. Now let's take a look at the system. This is a look at the principles we have been talking about all along, but using software, in this case TradeStation, to use those principles. We will look at using filters to add safety and to increase profit, finding the right stocks, weekly and daily rituals to enter and exit trades, and taking emotion out of trading by using technical indicators and specific rules. This is the system I use on Saturdays to prepare for the next week's trades. We begin by finding the market direction. This is the first and one of the most critical steps. We want to make sure we always trade in the same direction as the major markets. This is our first major safety filter. Begin by looking at the weekly MACD for either the NASDAQ Composite 100 or the index for the Dow Jones. Next we will look for stocks that will follow the current market trend. Now that we have determined the market trend by looking at the weekly MACD, we look for stocks that match that trend. If the market MACD is ticking up, we look for stocks that are doing the same. 
In this case, we would be trading long positions. If the MACD is ticking down, we would then look for dog stocks to short. Using the criteria to match the current market trend, either up if the MACD is ticking up or down if it is ticking down, go to your stock screener and find a pool of 30 to 50 stocks to begin screening. This is a table from the TradeStation software that I use and highly recommend. Once you have your pool of stocks derived from your stock screener, you place the stock symbols in the appropriate category at the bottom of the screen. You could also use a spreadsheet for this if you do not have the real-time streaming software. So our first filter is the weekly MACD. On a Saturday, look at all of the stocks in your pool of stocks using the 6-month weekly MACD. Filter out those stocks whose weekly MACDs are not headed in the same direction as the current market trend. Those stocks that pass the first filter are placed in the weekly category. We will continue up the chart one filter at a time until we reach the top. Now our second filter. Take all the stocks that are left after the first filter and screen them using the one month daily stochastic if you're using big charts. If the weekly MACD is headed up, screen out all stocks where the daily stochastic is not near 20 and turning up. If the weekly MACD is headed down, screen out all stocks where the daily stochastic is not near 80 and ready to turn down. All these stocks that pass the second filter move up the table and are placed in the category for stocks that have passed the daily stochastic filter. Our third filter is the hourly MACD. Screen all the stocks left after the second filter using the 5-day hourly MACD if you're using big charts. If you are looking to buy long positions, the hourly MACD must be below the center line. If you are looking to sell short, then the hourly MACD must be above the center line. All stocks that pass the third filter move up the chart and are placed in the next category. Stocks that make it to this category are checked each evening in preparation for the next day's trades. No stocks are removed until the next Saturday. These stocks are filtered each night using the final filter. The final filter is the 15 minute MACD. This will tell you what is most likely to happen early in the day tomorrow. This, along with the hourly MACD, will tell you which of your stocks are most likely to go in the direction you are trading for tomorrow. Check the news on these stocks, and those that show the most promise in the direction you are trading should be placed on your short list for tomorrow. Watch these stocks all day long and place your orders when appropriate. Place your stocks that have passed all your filters here and keep an eye on them during the day. So as you can see, with these filters we move slowly up the table. Each filter adds safety and the stocks that make it to the top are incredible stocks due to our stock screening that are at just the right time to buy. You can trade these stocks with almost no fear due to the process. This confidence will make trading much easier for novice or expert traders. Once we have purchased our stocks, we keep them at the top of the table so that we can keep track of them along with the key composite indexes. Once we have purchased a stock that has been taken from our short list, we can watch it using the various time frames. We can look at it in the weekly, daily, hourly, 15 minute and 5 minute time frames giving us a real good feel for where the stock has been, where it is, and where it is most likely to go next. We can also look at all the current trades for that stock, and we can also see the high bids and low asking prices on the major trading platforms. Once you have mastered the use of all this data and these tools, you will find that trading is not all that hard. It may seem daunting at first, but as you spend time using these tools, trading will become easier and easier. I hope this CD will help you to become an independent and successful trader. Good luck 
and may God bless you as you become financially independent.